What's everyone saying? It's your boy Summer This Was back again. I'm here today at Canary Wharf on the DLR. We got trains behind me. We got no trains behind me. Everyone knows that the DLR is automatic in a sort of way, but is it really? You know, there's the whole chat with transport and automation, but I kind of want to have a look and see how automatic is the DLR in reality let's go on some trains sit at the front it's a very foggy day so we're not really seeing much but we can answer the question and yeah i want to hear your thoughts in the comments below let's go if you're up to date with your current affairs on the multitude of social media platforms out there you'll probably recognize the chat from a certain group of folk that demonstrate their discontent towards the existence of every single worker on the railways every driver guard, platform staff, and even that one random dude working in that small coffee shop on platform 2. All of them need sacked, they're always going on strike, we can just replace them with automated computer AI generated robots. But come on, those with an inkling of sense, and bear in mind I don't have much myself, would know that this is just super unrealistic and mildly uneducated to think that the basically full-scale automation of the UK's railways would be logistically or financially possible. Even if we look at this idea in the context of the London Underground, for example, the cost, the manpower, and the disruption of retrofitting every station with the required infrastructure, procuring brand new trains that allow for full automatic operation, and redeploying and reskilling the city's many drivers and ancillary staff, would be an astronomical piece of work. Especially when you look at how the country deals with infrastructure projects in this big 21st century 2025. How long has it been taking to construct a certain railway in this country? Do folks really think that any sort of large-scale railway automation will ever happen in our lifetimes? A lot of folk like to use different examples of automatic railways from across the world and be like, it works there, why can't we do it? A common example used is London's Docklands Light Railway as a gotcha to say that full automation across the board is possible. It drives itself, let's just do it everywhere, we don't need drivers. <laughs> but they are misinformed and I shall delve into why. The Docklands Light Railway first began operation in 1987 operating two lines between Island Gardens and Tower Gateway and Island Gardens and Stratford. The system was built during the period where the Docklands regeneration was coming to life. It has since grown to consist of 45 stations and 24 miles of track. The DLR is obviously known for being that automatic train, the one where you can sit at the front and pretend you're driving it. I love the DLR, it's unique and from its outset, it represented an innovative and groundbreaking leap in light rail transportation, which should have been replicated across the UK, much like what France has done with their VAL technology, which is now in use on multiple French metro systems. But is the DLR the right example to use for folks advocating for the large-scale automation of the railways, even though the DLR itself isn't fully automatic? The Docklands Light Railway is in fact driverless, not fully automatic, like the Val trains in France for example. You'll note that there's a staff member on board every single train, who basically controls the operation of the doors, gets the train moving and does all the relevant health and safety checks required for regular operation, which is contrary to the belief that many folk hold about the DLR and its automation level. Of course, the trains are monitored remotely from control centres, but they do need a staff member on each train to operate them. The International Electrotechnical Commission's IEC 62267 standards demarcate five grades of railway automation, which rank from Go A0, which is no automation whatsoever, everything is manual, up to Go A4, which is full UTO, unattended train operation, the maximum level of automation. These levels of railway automation also correspond with the SAE vehicular automation levels, which regulate your self-driving cars and automatic pizza delivery machine vehicle thingies. Every rail-based system is graded along this scale. The DLR is in fact one below GOE4 at GOE3, driverless train operation, 
which is equivalent to SAE levels 3 and 4, meaning conditional automation and high automation. This means that the vehicle still needs to be manually put in and out of operation, the status of the vehicle needs to be supervised, and the trains themselves cannot detect and manage emergency situations without operation staff present. The onboard staff member can roam around the train, choosing to be up at the front or even chilling at the rear. If we look at the least automation level there is, go a zero, line of sight operations, a good example of a system is the Croydon trams, similar to SAE level zero. Everything is done manually by the operator, the safety and efficiency of train movements are fully under their control. That means there aren't things like automatic train protection that would stop a vehicle if it mistakenly passes a red signal at danger. That means a lot of concentration is needed, a lot of focus is needed, which I definitely don't have. One above GoA0 is GoA1. By the way, is it GoA, is it GoA or GOA? Because it's a small O. I don't know, I'm calling it GoA. Yeah, one above GoA0 is GoA1 non-automated train operation. A good example of GOA1 in London is the London Overground or the Bakerloo line and is similar to SAE Level 1. It's basically manual operation, but with the added feature of automatic train protection mitigating any impacts caused by human error. One above GOA1 is GOA2, semi-automatic train operation. A good example of this is the Victorian Jubilee lines and the Elizabeth line within its core section. It is similar to SAE Level 2. Basically, starting and stopping the vehicle is automated, but drivers control the opening of doors and can take charge manually when required, and there are automatic train protection and operation on board. A driver is always needed within the cab though, otherwise that train is not moving. We've covered GOA3, so let's look at GOA4, unattended train operation, similar to SAE level 5, full automation. No drivers or attendants are required, the vehicles do not require cabs, with them only needing a small panel to control it during rare manual movements, so during maintenance, storage or failure recovery. A lot of these systems also have platform screen doors to reduce any risk of people falling onto the tracks. The only examples of these I can think of in the UK are all those people movers at airports like Stansted, Gatwick and Heathrow. To be fair, there is actually a small section of the Elizabeth Line west of Paddington that operates fully automatically, where once a train departs Paddington into the sidings of Westbourne Park, it will then reverse automatically and head the other way whilst the driver changes ends. Go A4 isn't really seen here in the UK, but it's popular across the world. Our European neighbours love it. Look at Nuremberg or the couple of lines on the Paris Metro with automatic trains. Like I mentioned before, full automation on railways is a whole load of work. It would be super expensive to retrofit 100 year old tube lines to be fully automatic in this country and would also be a right struggle to negotiate with the multiple unions with staff that would be affected by these changes. Yes, I do mention the Paris Metro which has line 14 which was fully automatic from the onset and two rather old lines which have been converted to full automation, lines 1 and 4. But you've got to understand how much investment had been put into funding these conversions. We're talking 600 million euro for line 1 and 480 million euro for line 4. That is insane levels of dollar. Also considering that the London Underground is a much larger system and marginally older system compared to the Paris Metro. And I'm pretty sure the way both systems are funded are wildly different. Maybe the best option for automation is to build them from scratch, like the Line 14. We did it in the 80s, so why hasn't it been replicated? The DLR had that winning formula, light rail that is automatic. But no, we ain't seen anything like it since. One thing is for sure though, we're not seeing mass automation on the railways for a very long time, so don't get your hopes up lads, the drivers are here to stay. So you find me here at Stratford at the end of one of the branches of the DLR. If you like the video, make sure you drop a like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. 
I'm gonna get on a 108 and enjoy a trip down to Lewisham and I'll see you in the next video. Kofi Patreon in the description below. Peace, peace, peace. See you later, see you later, see you later. Bye.